Hey guys, this is Dow Phoenix and welcome to Topic Tuesdays. Every Tuesday there is going to be a video game related subject that we're going to talk about, at least for the foreseeable future. And the first inaugural episode is going to be about game cases. I mean, all through the years we've seen a large variety of ways for our games to be sold in and stored in. And it's been really interesting through the years seeing everything that we've had. I mean, the gaming industry, at least commercially, has been around for a little over 40 years. Uh, or no, it has been, it has been, yeah, a little over 40 years. I guess you count like the Pond clones and things like that. But, um, you know, the game media that we play on, cartridges, discs, chips, whatever they are, they all come in a variety of different form factors. And I want to show you some of the ones that I have and some of the experiences that I have. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to show you anything like a 3DO case or a Turbo Graphics case because I don't have those. But you can look them up online and see how they compare to the rest of these. So let's get into it. All right. So the first one I'd like to talk about is the old school systems like the Atari, the NES, and so on. They all came in a cardboard box roughly of this size and shape. Atari was the one that kind of innovated it, and then pretty much everybody else copied this type of form factor for a fair while, you know, good 10 years or so, which we'll get to in a bit. But, you know, they would usually come in a box like this. Usually they'll have like a foam insert, a manual, uh, the game itself, maybe like one of these little plastic dust sleeves for the game. Uh, just neat stuff like this, you know. Uh, the boxes, they look very nice, but they don't hold up to uh, punish it very well since they're you know, very thin cardboard that uh, just, it's not really meant to last. And I think a lot of people realize, that's why a lot of people got rid of these boxes, because they would get crumpled up and damaged anyways. And it's such a shame, that's why it's hard to find box games of these or Atari or any of the other systems that came in a form factor like this. Now, a company that you might know called Sega found a perfect solution to this and probably created the best game case of all time. Um, so pretty much it's went downhill from there. Uh, but I'm, of course, talking about the cases that came with the Sega Genesis and Sega Master System. These clamshell cases were just awesome. I mean, they were sturdy. Still lightweight. I mean, literally, it weighs just a bit more than what the NES case is. Uh, you had a perfect thing to hold your cartridge in place. A spot for your manual. These things were just awesome. Now, they could be broken. They're not indestructible or anything like that. But they're a bit sturdier than most of the cases that we're going to cover. And they look great. I really like the little bit of a textured ridge that they have on the plastic. I don't know if you guys can see it on camera here. Maybe I'll tilt it. It might make it easier to see if the light shines against it or something. But uh, these cases are just fantastic. I love those. Um, then Sega consequently went to make probably one of the worst cases of all time, which is the Sega CD and Sega Saturn case right here. Like Star Wars Rebels saw it right here. Now, I see what the idea they were going with. They were trying to do the whole clamshell thing, but they also went jewel case, and the old CD jewel case format just was not very sturdy, honestly. And so it ended up being quite a bad combination. Plus, oftentimes, manufacturers had to have like a little foam insert to keep the disc from getting loose in transport. And with how much space there is, I mean, if you had a loose disc, it could get easily scratched up. I mean, if you guys ever played with, like, PS4 discs, you might know what I'm talking about because those sometimes come loose whenever you buy them, although the cases are a lot smoother and a lot thinner, so you, it's rarely ever scratched up. I don't think I ever re received a scratched PS4 game like that, but I imagine that could have been a problem for the Sega CD, and that's why they had to do that, but, yeah, these cases are just awful, man. That takes us to our old bad boy, the PC. Now... Oblivion is one of the only old school box PC games I have, and really it's not even the old school one, because the old school ones, you know, are more like this size and about that thick, you know, they were gigantic monstrosities. Um, pretty much the same 
thing going on is the NES, you know. Um, obviously, they have things for discs and whatnot. Uh, I'm not sure where the actual paperwork that when the sides went to. I have no idea. It's literally been ten and a half years since I bought this. And, uh, yeah. Because I bought it at launch on the PC, which that's a whole other story entirely. But, uh, you know, good old PC big box games... They're a classic. I, I really like the style of them, you know. I, I like the uniqueness of them. They had all kinds of sizes and shapes and all kinds of things like that. Now, it can be a real hassle for a collector trying to catalog them and store them because, uh, yeah, I mean, they didn't have any kind of uniform form factor and uh, that was a real pain in the ass. But I really still love the style of them and that's what I'm really interested in. Just to go in line with the Sega Saturn cases that we talked about, there is the old long box PS1 cases, which was a really interesting decision because they were almost identical to a uh, Sega CD case. Uh, this one's in pretty bad shape right here. This is a King's Field one. Like, they're pretty much identical in terms of the actual form factor. But they make them look different. Um, instead of giving it that obvious jewel case look, they textured it up with all kinds of stickers and whatnot. And uh, these are terrible cases too. I mean, this disc is probably in bad shape because, uh, again, foam inserts are needed for these cases, man. This case is just fell apart and it's a shame. I really would love to have this game in a jewel case. As a matter of fact, I might just put it in a jewel case because it's gonna just knock around everywhere but uh, that takes us to the other PlayStation games as well as Sega Dreamcast for that matter uh, they both use the jewel case format they're identical uh, as you can see the jewel case format is not the most sturdy you've got a Power Stone 2 copy with a little bit of crack um, actually not uncommon to see something like this on a jewel case game it really isn't um, but uh, they are um, very nice as far as the form factor, you know, they fit great on media shelves and bookshelves and things like that. They're small and slick looking. I mean, they, they look great. It's just they're not very sturdy. Um, now, I really love, though, the uh, dual style jewel, jewel cases, you know, which PS1 RPGs and such really popularized this style, man. I love these styles because you can fit multiple games and it had a nice little spot for the uh, multiple games, multiple discs. This is one game, obviously. Um, and, you know, you can have a whole bunch of discs with these. You know, I've seen, I remember seeing like PS1 games that had like five discs, like Riven. I mean, that was just insane. You could fit a lot of discs in these things. Um, so, yeah, these were kind of cool. Uh, not bad, though. Now, PlayStation definitely upped their game with the PS2 case, man. This, of course, is obviously based on a standard DVD case, although it wasn't truly standardized by the time the PS2 came out, although the PS2 arguably set the standard for what a DVD case should be like. Um, you know, it's very similar in the form factor to a Sega Genesis. They use that nice plastic. It's a lot thinner form factor, though, which is really nice. Um... You also had a spot to hold your memory cards. People mocked the hell out of these for some reason, but you know what? When you were a hardcore gamer and you had a lot of memory cards, very handy. Very handy indeed. Um, you know, nice spot for your manual. Uh, the cases, open and close, really good. Um, they're pretty durable. They're not too bad on that front. Um, we also had PC games that came in a form factor similar to that like i got here with fable the lost chapters on pc uh, which has a crap load of discs unfortunately they didn't give a nice little flip thing it's just like oh drop a bunch of discs there um i don't know if the product key would even work anymore but uh have at it if you want i guess um <laughs> because uh, this is like an old ass pc game and uh even if you had the product key you still need discs right so suckers Plus, I already got it on PC, and I've got the Anniversary Edition on PC, so it's like, I don't really care if you steal my code, if you can even use it, right? So that gets us to the Xbox 360, which uses a pretty similar format. Obviously, the original Xbox as well. I don't have a case on that right now. Pretty similar. Um, 
Obviously, it's missing the uh, memory card holder. Um, the disc is centralized. Everything else seems pretty similar, but for some reason, the plastic on these are just a bit flimsy. I don't know if it's because they were, you know, because they were making a translucent plastic. Maybe they couldn't make it as thick or what the case is. I'm not a plastic-tician, you know. But uh, for some reason, these cases just were not as good as the PS2 cases. That also holds true for a couple other cases that we'll discuss here. But the Xbox 360 cases, they're, they're okay. You know, they're okay. Uh, same goes for the original Xbox cases. They're pretty similar. Although, I think those actually did have a little more firm plastic, kind of like the PS2. So... If I'm not mistaken. Uh, now the PS3 cases, I really like these uh, because obviously they pretty much set the standard for Blu-ray cases, just like uh, PS2 did for DVDs. Really, um, you know, nice little clamshell design, little good spot for your manual. I really like how they have this kind of thing going on here up at the top. That really gives it a nice look. Obviously, only the older uh, PS3 games are going to have this going on here with the PlayStation 3 logo, as you can see right there. But um, they all have like the Blu-ray disc format. That's pretty cool. Um, yeah, I really like these cases. They're nice and sturdy, and uh, unfortunately, Sony went downhill from there as well as the other companies, which we'll get to in a bit. Um, then we finally have uh, the new gen, the current gen games. Uh, so we've got the Wii U. Oh wait, no, I skipped the Wii. Actually, hold on. <laughs> So, uh, let's go to the Wii first. Okay. Um, we got the Wii. Uh, pretty much... Pretty much the same as, like, an original Xbox case. Um, about that sturdiness. Um, uh, doesn't have that translucency. Not as good as a PS2 case, but still, it's really close. It really is. Um, unfortunately, they have a little bit of a, like... I don't know if you can see it here. It's got, like, a little bit of a hollowness there. Supposedly, it makes it more sturdy, but I don't buy it at all. Um, same with the Wii U cases, of course. I mean, the Wii and Wii U cases are pretty much identical, other than color, honestly. Um, so I probably didn't even need to show both of them to you guys. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. They just they look pretty much the exact same. They just separate it with color and like a little bit of the graphics and whatnot. Now we've got the PS4 and the Xbox One cases, which are pretty much identical with a couple of differences, which uh, Microsoft just had to be different uh, on this one for some reason. Um, so anyways, the uh, PS4 cases, they're like the PS3, but they have that kind of indention. Um, they're just not as durable. They, they seem like they're a lot more flexible. And... Uh, I, don't, I just don't like the PS4 cases too much compared to the PS3. The PS3 ones are a lot sturdier, um, I'm not, in my eyes. And then Xbox had to do something completely different because, for one, they made it all squarish, which that's not too bad. That's actually not a bad idea on its own. Uh, but these are, like, really flimsy feeling, too. And uh, for some reason, they put the disc on the left-hand side. Like, what does what is up with that? And if you're someone like me that doesn't like that... Um, and you try to, say, flip the case insert so that uh, the disc will be on the right side. You'll see the problem here in a bit. If you try to do it to where the case on the right side, well, guess what? This is upside down! But you finally have your game on the right side. What a dumbass decision, Microsoft. Why'd you do that to us? Okay, and now we're going to talk about some portable cases here. I've got a uh, Sega Game Gear game right here, Sonic Triple Trouble, and uh, these cases are pretty similar to the NES ones. Um, one notable difference is that instead of having like the cardboard inserts, they actually had like a little carving in there for the cartridge to go in, as well as a nice little plastic case for the cartridge, which is really cool. Um, and then the manual slips in a separate thing, so that's a pretty good design, but again, just like the old NES box games, these are prone to some damage, as you can see, there's some creases, and Things like that, they don't hold up uh, to the pressures of time or uh, humanity, I guess. Now, the DS cases, these are awesome. These are pretty much the PS2 of uh, portable cases. Um, as a matter of fact, it is pretty much the PS2 of portable cases. You have your slot for your uh, DS card as well as the Game Boy Advance card, which is really nice. Uh, nice spot for your manual. These are nice and thick. 
Not too much flexibility, no give on the back or anything like that. These are really nice. Uh, I have no idea where the actual Big Brain Academy game is. Don't ask me. Now, I also got the PS Vita cases, which uh, are pretty solid. They're not bad looking. I really like the uh, style of these. They're, it's not quite as uh, durable as the DS case, but it's still pretty close. It doesn't have like that give problem that some of the bigger consoles do. Uh, the cases look nice and slick, and they, they look good on the shelf, so uh, those are pretty nice as well. And the last I want to cover, of course, are metal cases. I love these steelbook cases. I've got, uh, for example, here, Perfect Dark the Zero for the 360. I bought this for, like, two bucks at GameStop. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's got a, both discs and everything like that. Um, it's got all the stuff. It's got, like, a little comic book and things like that. I really like steelbook cases because... They feel pretty sturdy. They do get banged up. You can see sometimes they get like dents and things like that. Um, you know, that's just going to happen. Sometimes they might get scratched up. But as far as the actual case themselves, you know, they really hold together quite well compared to the plastic case uh, for the most part. Um, we've got one here for uh, Dark Souls 2 and Dark Souls 3, which these are some beautiful cases right here, man. Awesome, awesome stuff. And unfortunately, you had to get the collector's edition to get this one, which also gave me that statue back there. But that's another story entirely. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little look at game cases. I know it's quite a long video, um, but uh, there was a lot to talk about. I want to hear what you guys think about what your favorite cases are, what your least favorite cases are. And uh, let's uh, let's get our case on, right? That's That's such a terrible pun. Let's get let's get let's just get some quesos going. Okay, <laughs> I'm just gonna stop there. So till then, down Phoenix out.